Hot air balloons have been a thing for a long time. We've perfected the tech of floating with balloons to an appreciable extent. But even the most dreamy scientists would have told you 30 years ago that balloons would never take us to space. However, we are now in 2021 and, as you know, strange things tend to happen in 2021. Today on Super Freaky Science, we'll be providing an answer to the question, can balloons take us to space? Can balloons take us to space? Exciting as that may seem, the answer is no. Balloons can't be fired by rockets and they cannot possibly achieve the thrust needed to reach space. So no, we aren't going to be sending balloons up to the sky anytime soon. However, balloons already play a huge part in the launching tech at our disposal today. While huge companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin may go the traditional rocket and launch pad way, it's important to know that should we choose to, we just may be able to employ balloons in the launching of rockets. And how did we learn to do this? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The development of the Rockoon the Raccoon, a rocket launched by a balloon, was discovered when a scientist called James Van Allen decided that he would test something out. But before all that, let's go back to the launch pad and rockets for a bit. One of the reasons rocket launches are so expensive is that the rocket propellant needs to break the hold of gravity on the rocket and create thrust. It's more difficult to create thrust while on the ground because the atmosphere is so dense. This means that rockets have to expend so much rocket fuel on just trying to escape the first few thousand feet of the Earth's density. Van Allen figured that the rocket could be fired above the Earth's atmosphere. It wouldn't have to go through the drag and would be able to reach higher altitudes. So he came up with an idea. And the idea was this. Instead of rockets firing from the Earth, it would be lifted by a hot air balloon to a level where the air isn't quite as dense, and then it would fire. The solution, of course, seemed easy. But, as with all theories, it took a lot of testing and experimenting for Van Allen to figure out what was going to work. By 1953, Van Allen was done with all his work. However, he wasn't allowed to fire his balloon and rockets, which he called the Raccoon, on the mainland because the spent rocket would fall and perhaps kill someone or crush their house. To solve this problem, Allen convinced the US Coast Guard to let him fire the rocket from an icebreaker east wind that was bound for Greenland. The Coast Guard agreed, and Allen got his rocket and balloon onto the ship. The first balloon rose about 70,000 feet, however the rocket didn't fire. The second rocket behaved in the same manner, and Alan was sure that there was something wrong at this point. To solve the problem of the rocket not firing, he came up with the theory that extreme cold and high altitude might have stopped the clockwork supposed to ignite the rocket. To test this hypothesis, he heated cans of orange juice, snuggled them onto the third raccoon's gondola, and wrapped the whole business in insulation. This time, the rocket fired. Now, this test was just a proof of concept. It wasn't to functionally take rockets to space, it was just to prove that the raccoon could work. When Van Allen was developing his solution, he wasn't thinking about space at all. No one was thinking about space launches. After the success of Van Allen's experiment, the US Office of Naval Research started using his raccoons to launch their sounding rockets. By the late 1950s, Van Allen's raccoon launching had been perfected, and the Navy had launched about 37 of them. JP Aerospace the idea of the raccoon has been around for a long time, but it has seen limited use over the years. However, all that may be changing. JP Aerospace, an American company that aims to achieve affordable access to space. So conceptually, it has the same goal as other companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin. According to JP Aerospace, they are America's other space program. 
Whether this means they are an alternative to NASA is unclear, but one thing is clear. This isn't an ordinary space company. Unlike all other space companies, JP Aerospace is primarily staffed by volunteers, which, as you expect, may slow down productivity somewhat. However, despite that, the company manages to record some successes. This is perhaps due to the fact that Aerospace has significantly different approaches to achieving cheaper access to space. How different? Well, very. First off, the company has a stated plan of trying to make space more accessible. They also plan to do this without using chemical rockets. That's why the company is involved in a lot of unorthodox launching methods, including airships and, yes, raccoons. In fact, the company plans to improve on the concept of the raccoon and use it to power up its entire operation. In fact, the company's first ever launch was to be powered by a raccoon. It was an early suborbital space launch attempt at the Black Rock Desert in northwestern Nevada in May of 1999. Sadly, the launch attempt was unsuccessful. What made the failed launch attempt even worse was the entire event was covered by CNN. CNN had covered the event because they were the last company for being cheap access to space prize, and since they failed, the prize went unclaimed. Since that failure, JP Aerospace has made huge strides. For example, they have launched several balloons into the upper atmosphere, and these rockets have carried mixed payloads for research students and media companies. Some of the media clients include outfits like Discovery Channel, National Geographic, and Space Chair. In fact, in 2011, a twin balloon utility airship is said to have set an altitude record of 95,085 feet. The company has also carried several Progsat into space. Progsat is a small experiment housed in a table tennis or ping pong ball. When JP Aerospace launches Prongsat, they get it from all over the world. They come from Germany, Belgium, California, Indonesia, Slovenia, Japan, and lots of other countries. These Prongsats are experiments that fit inside a cut-in-half, then taped together, table tennis ball. Funding for these launches often comes from crowdfunded sources. Yeah, that's right. No other space company in the world launches payloads with money from crowdfunding. But JP Aerospace is different like that. Aside from Prongsats, balloon flights by JP Aerospace have also carried Minicubes to space. The Minicube is a bit larger than the Prongsat, so that gives you a view of the kind of payloads that a raccoon can launch. The Possibilities of Balloon Rockets According to JP Aerospace, the possibilities are endless. Right now, the company is still focused on getting as many prongsats as possible to the edge of space, and there are endless possibilities with even that. For example, there are several kinds of experiments that could be put in prongsats, and they could be as simple or as complicated as needed. Some people put something as simple or as mundane as plant seeds in their prongsats, while others put more complex things, like full upper atmospheric labs. JP Aerospace also says that one of the most interesting things they've seen in a prongsat is a marshmallow. Apparently, when the marshmallow in the prongsat gets to about 100,000 feet, it puffs up and fills the entire bowl, and then it freezes dry. When the prongsat gets to Earth, students get to hold direct evidence of what happens to something travelling at the very top of the atmosphere. The Limitations of Balloon Rockets Despite the exciting things that JP Aerospace is doing now, it's important to note that the company hasn't yet managed to clinch the Holy Grail. Since losing the CATS prize in 1999, They've not attempted another launch to reach suborbital environments using the Raccoon Launcher. And it appears that they've abandoned that dream completely. Now, it's easy to assume that the obstacles facing the Raccoon launches are just regular rocket-sized problems, but they aren't. One of the biggest obstacles facing the potential of balloon-based launchers is guidance. 
When rockets are launched, they are often done at a specific location, and they often have a significant mechanism embedded in them that allows them to steer. However, balloons don't have that. This means the location from which the rocket is launched can be uncertain. Now, pilots may, however, change direction by ascending or descending to pick up varying wind directions at different altitudes. But that certainly doesn't have the same utility as a proper rocket. It's a little wonder that JP Aerospace hasn't been able to reach space with the Raccoon. It's simply impossible. Right now, of course. Sometime in the future, a rocket scientist may come along and make the impossible possible. But as of right now, that isn't happening. So no, raccoons can't take us to space. Not even a little bit. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons for more cool videos like this. Goodbye and stay safe.